Today, we're gonna to take a look at making components reactive to time. And to do that, I have this little demo here. It's a button that says, click me. And when you click it, it shows the time that the button was last clicked. Now, what I wanna to do today is instead of showing this uh, ugly date string, I just wanna say, you know, the button was clicked one second ago. So here's the code. And instead of rendering that date string, let's display how many seconds ago the button was clicked. So there's a function uh, from datafns called format distance strict. And what this will do is this will compare two dates. So the first date is going to be uh, when our button was last clicked and that's stored in this last click state. And then we're gonna compare it to the current time. And so we'll just use new date. So when we click our button, we can see we got rid of that date string uh, but it says zero seconds and it's not updating. I would expect this to update, you know, to one seconds, two seconds, and so on. So let's see if we can make our component update as time moves on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new piece of state to track the current time. So we'll just use a state called now and we're going to seed it with the date. So we're going to use some React state to trigger re-renders every second. And then now, instead of comparing to a new date, we can compare to our React state that's now. And just to see that this is working the same as before, I'll click the button, the time doesn't update. Now, the reason it says four seconds here instead of zero seconds is because it's using this date that's now seeded when the uh, component was first created, not during render. Okay, so now we wanna make this now variable update and actually represent now. And the way I would normally think about this is, in JavaScript is having a set interval function that runs every second or so and updates the variable. But because we're in a React hook, we can't really use set interval. Set interval is an imperative API and hooks are declarative. But luckily for us, there are a number of implementations of set interval that work in hooks land. Uh, you may have seen them before, but something like use interval, and this is gonna have the exact same API as set interval. So it's gonna take a function and it's gonna run this function every so often. And we'll just say uh, run it every second or every thousand milliseconds for now. Now this set interval hook is coming from this uh, interval hooks package. Uh, I'll link that in the description. And this is also the same set interval that comes from Dan Abramoff's blog, if you're familiar with that. I'll link that as well. Now inside this interval, uh, all we wanna do is we wanna update our now variable. So we'll call set now and we wanna update it to the current date, so we'll do new date. Okay, now when I click the button, you can see that we're getting our updates. Our seconds are increasing, so this is great. We're making progress, and we can see that our uh, seconds counter is working, but there's actually a bug here, and I can show that to you by adding some options to format distance. So I'm gonna add this uh, add suffix true, and what this does is this is gonna format our seconds uh, so we get a suffix, one second ago, two seconds ago. But when I initially click the button, you're gonna see it's gonna flash in zero seconds. So there's this weird flash that's going on. And the reason this is happening is because we're comparing last clicked to now. And the last clicked is getting updated as soon as we click the button to a new date. But our now variable, is only updated every second. So there's a possibility of lag here where the click appears like it happens in the future until set now is called. So there's a few ways to fix this. We could have now update every one millisecond instead of every second. But I think there's an easier way to think about this. And that is anytime our component needs a date, it should just use now. And so instead of using new date on line 15, uh, we can update this to now. And now I can click our button and I no longer see the in one second or in zero seconds. So there's a takeaway here that by making our component reactive to its version of time inside of the interval means that anytime our component needs to reference time, it needs to reference its own version. So instead of using new date, um, which immediately becomes stale, we wanna use our components version of time, which is this now state. And we can take this a step further by turning this all into a hook 
So it's clear what's providing a date and what's using a date. I think a good name for this hook would be use clock. And we can grab all of our code that sets now and move this up into our use clock hook. Now use clock needs to return now. And then down in our component, uh, we can say let now equals use clock. And if we click the button, this should all work the same as before. But now it's very easy when we look at our component. We have a now that we get from our clock. Uh, when the button is clicked, we set last click to now. And then when we need to compare two dates, we can compare last click to now. It's all declarative, it's all easy to read, and the complexity of how the component updates, how the component subscribes to time, is all hidden right inside this hook. So there's one more thing that we have to be aware of when we move all this code into a hook, and that's this use interval right here. Uh, every single component that uses this hook is going to have its own interval, and those intervals are all gonna be firing at the same frequency. They're all gonna fire every second, but when those intervals start, is going to be when the component rendered. So I was working on an app a few months ago and I had multiple components using a clock, but they would render at different times. So you would see all the clocks update at different intervals, even though they were all updating once a second. It was really, really odd to see. So there's a way we can fix this. And that is instead of use interval, we're going to use synchronized interval. And all this does is this ensures that any component that's using this clock, it's always gonna tick at the exact same rate and the exact same time. So one more time, let's click our button and we can see that everything's working. If you're curious about how this synchronized interval works, I have a whole video explaining it, so I'll link it in the description below. But otherwise, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.